Introduction of Renaissance, a book of verse by Walter Crane. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Introduction read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. To MFC. This sheaf that I have bound of mingled grain beneath the noon to give a spot of shade where might we sit and mark before they fade the fleeting lights across life's dappled plain ere with its treasured had times a rolling wane piled up with memories and thoughts unsaid with hopes and fears in trembling leaf and blade turns sunward where the harvest home is made perchance the tangled stems some flowers enfold not all unmeet the brows of her to wreath who with me bore the burden of the morn if yet the scarlet please not on the corn love's blue is steadfast and thy name in gold is writ by love's wing feather underneath of the poems in this book the whole of those included in part one are now printed for the first time of the rest the sirens three thoughts in a hammock a herald of spring and the rondeau across the fields all appeared with designs of mine as decorative pages in the english illustrated magazine the sirens three being afterwards issued with the illustrations in book form by messrs macmillan and company whom i have to thank for permission to reprint it with the others here flora's feast with colored designs of flowers to each couplet has been published as a christmas book by messrs cassell and company at whose consent it reappears i regret there should have been any delay in the appearance of the book which has been owing to the illness of the engraver who had charge of some of the blocks walter crane april eighteen ninety one end of introduction part one earlier poems invocation by walter crane Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. O soul of souls, awake! Lift up thine eyes to meet the day spring, till their sphered skies flash answering light to pierce the clinging veil of mists and shadows of the night grown pale. Renascent, leave the tombment of thy bed, though rich with painted love of legend dead, and gilded with the gold of hallowed time and dim with dreams and darkness of the prime o joy of man arise behold time brings deliverance for thee and thought's swift wings are dyed afresh in iris hues of hope who paints for thee by her creative scope new heaven in earth renewed before thy sight with golden fields unreaped and fresh delight of flower and fruit of no forbidden tree where life is love and blooms sweet liberty o bride of light like aphrodite rise from rosy waves of morn that crystallize thy sacred image in their mirror smooth as sculpture of the shining limbs they soothe and clothe thyself in pureness like the sun with lily lawn and blue of heaven spun from spotless fields of interstellar space a seamless shrine to keep thy inward grace put on thy broidered robe thy bride's attire put on thy glory and the jewel fire of fearless thought nor let thine handmaid spare all grateful tribute from the sweet and fair to deck thy loveliness and make appear the fullness of the beauty thou dost wear but let no crown thy golden head dethrone except the coronal of wisdom's own fare forth fair bride and from thy chamber come lo they are waiting who shall lead thee home the winged procession of the eager hours before thy feet to pave the way with flowers the daughters of the year the seasons four have decked the happy earth with sun and shower each joyful mouth each blissful day is swift to bring unto thy feet its treasured gift the sisters three who plough and sow and reap still gather thee time's grain in growing heap from golden age to golden age to be their dreamful faces wrapped in prophecy of veiled futurity's potential hour where fate prepareth thine immortal dower 
arise sweet soul arise and take thy throne up built in ages long by stone on stone the human spirit's still aspiring stair whose marble feet were laid in toil and care and washed with tears and worn in eager quest of false and fleeting phantoms seeking rest but now thy feet are fledged and would aspire to climb the summit of thy hope's desire high where in sculptured walls then towers rise her architecture white in azure skies tinged with the fire of dawn above thy head ah there fair soul thy marriage feast is spread and there with wisdom still and knowledge clear sweet counsel shalt thou take and without fear for love will give thee law and love shall be thy chancellor and rule equality no sceptre shall thy white right hand e'er hold but sacred freedom brighter than the gold of kingships and blessing by the power that crowns life's magic staff with bud and flower nor be thy sister hand forgotten soul the while her slender fingers do control the world's large heart and in its compass found the wealth of all the universe inbound and thou shalt open the eternal reign of justice while fair peace with all her train shall sow the earth with blessings and impart new joy and skill to men in craft and art to gather from all the shores the scattered gems with beauty's pearls to deck thought's diadems and poesy shall fill thy courts with song and commonwealth the ocean gateways throng with white-winged messengers from all the lands and tidings glad shall join the nation's hands from riches and from penury set free and from the last dread link of slavery and eke from tyrant sword and tyrant gold and priestly nightmare that the soul doth fold there giant labor in his strength new-found rejoicing shall go forth to break new ground one brotherhood with art and knowledge clear to bridge the gulf of space and bring men near with fruitful brain and hand to bring new birth of titan forces to subdue the earth and from the willing hands of nature draw new benefits and owning but her law out of her treasury things tried and true in human faith and hope to build anew man's shattered house and paint his storied wall for life and love a heritage for all end of poem this recording is in the public domain Section 2 of Renaissance, A Book of Verse by Walter Crane. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The City of Love about the time when garlanded green may at summer's threshold casts her blossom crown time bore me on his winged wheels away out of the joyless city where i lay from smoke dim streets whose dusky skies disown the day god's glorious face serene that shows this day of days to reign in his fair house cloud built and white and interspaced with blue above the green earth's fields that i did pass bearing ungathered harvests in their grass of star-bright flowers and every magic hue born of the hours and of the kindling zone sun cast o'er wandering mead and upland loam that now on every hand mine eyes did fill as went the wheel world with the fiery will and always as the changeful landscape spread mead beyond mead and furrowed ridge and tree and traversed road and bridge and woodland lee me seemed as a chart my life to see what was and is and that which is to be as dark and bright the region's face i read nor yet i stayed at all but still with time fled by and onward many leagues until about the height of day the wheel was still about the hour it was ere noon should chime and i looked forth and saw dim pointed spires like flames arising from a golden mead which burned with all the yellow crowded fires of shining cups that fill the fields of may whereby a city fair mine eyes had heed 
verged round with bowery close and willows grey shading the silent water's secret way girdling the quiet town with clustered reed thence rose no surge of men or sound of strife but smoothly glowed the even hours of life told by the sweet-tongued bells in tuneful towers and in the streets there moved the breath of flowers and incense such as riseth after showers upon deep gardens hiding in their bowers the inmost heart of sweetness still my way drew on between high-windowed walls and old that to the street an ancient story told with solemn mien unto life's changing day in restless ebb and flow as sea waves play about the feet of lonely cliffs though now even these i passed as fleeting things in vain for all my heart a strange consuming pain possessed in thought of what i hoped to gain filled with an exquisite fire wherein did show all things as dross or gold of fairest vein as since the gate of love had oped for me i lived in hell or heavenly ecstasy but all things on this day had good import for even now i went to love's high court to greet my heart's dear queen where she did dwell in this his holy city where the streets seem gold or like the burnished path which meets the sun's bright porch across the shining sea so in love's glory shone my way to me until before her gate the splendour fell robed in sweet grace and crowned with her hair i met my queen upon her palace stair and near i was to fall and worship there as to her hand i brought a golden gift which she my gracious sovereign counted well and me unto her highest grace did lift making me rich above all kingly state for side by side within her house we sat or neath the azure canopy of heaven and every hour and every day of seven brought unto our feet their separate joy and every day the plenteous feast was spread before my grateful heart and eyes and lips that drank the wine of love and broke his bread and drew my soul delight through honey sips from the sweet source of sweet which may not cloy then from love's banquet rising my beloved forth led me in the bond of her dear hand that we in his glad courts might understand fresh joyance and through all his realm we moved adown the golden street my lady led where passed us to and fro love's votaries the searchers of his book within whose eyes was writ his name and whose chanting lips had said his prayers and horizons within the shrines dim-windowed strange and still with sacred air stirred by the wings of singing spirits fair when the sweet anthem lifteth or declines in organ waves that sweep along the lines of the soul's shore to break upon and die soft on the soothed borders silently we passed by the door and entered in for in love's holy place we sought to win high ecstasy whereon our souls might climb even to the utmost gate of golden bliss and know within the sanctuary of this our dear inheritance in god's good time love's service done forth streamed from their place his choristers and singing boys attired in white raiment shining where they quired and after them we went with silent pace and towards the groves of pleasure turned our face whence by green quietude of cloistered stone and shadowed courts that kept themselves alone and neath the carven boughs that interlace until we came beneath the fairer roof of curtained leaves light spread of greenest woof glowing between the stony window fret as shines such light of paradise men get dark barred by care which holdeth them aloof and binds their souls within life's twisted net but entered we the joyful eden gate where talk the trees of summer and of green more glorious than may's bright head doth screen whereas she hideth from the flaming state when the all regal sun would penetrate seeking dominion in the realm of shade where now we thought to find sweet pleasure laid and take her sleeping while the hour should wait yea hidden in the odorous isles of may whose fragrance fans the air which faints away there in a labyrinth of leaves i caught her 
whereby soft willows kiss the silent water i caught her and i kissed though she did pray release and said thou canst not hold time's daughter but her i held nor let her thence depart till i had won her favourable grace and after oft we saw her fleeting face laugh through the leaves and in our kindled heart were glad exceedingly nor thought to part content a little while in each fair place to know a sweet above all flowery space my faint tongue faltereth when i would tell what doors of joy we passed what sights to seek but love's day endeth and his holy week whose dear appointed feasts we kept full well seeking love's face at morn and eventide though oft it was too bright to look upon shining above the splendour of the sun a burning flame when day's dim fire had died and now the last of days it came to pass i with my love upon a space of grass sat by a water which the willows kept and silently the stream beneath them swept secret as time and still and staying not fair fell the sun through glancing leaves above and fair on us did shine the sun of love as one brief hour together we forgot all earthly things in that enchanted plot the world of strife and evil favoured care and misery whose voice was silent there even so a little while our blissful lot a little while but soon the end befell for time a sudden shadow on us fell and loud above i heard his hateful bell clang in the tower to ring our sweet day's knell thence was i torn from my dear love away and as a dream i lost upon that day my hold of joy and slipped adown adown nor knew i more until i woke again unto the endless world with all its pain the sea-wide city and the sad refrain of hungry waves that now my song would drown end of section two section three of renaissance a book of verse by walter crane this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the house of dreams i sat in my soul's house one day the world-wide book before me lay and in mine eyes as through a glass the colours of all things did pass and thought and life in mingled stream strange semblance showed as in a dream my soul still house lies hid in trees and sitting in its porch one sees before the feet a garden green amidst a wild and dark demean when sight may range by lea and lawn from sunset to the gate of dawn till through the utmost wood may be descried a dim and dreadful sea five gates it hath five porches fair that no bright guests of light and air and through the windows clear and high the winged thoughts come from earth and sky that show me things by shore and sea and visions high of things to be anigh the house a water clear born of some secret crystal mirror among the mountains of the land and flowing to the dim sea strand but still and silent in its pace that in its smooth translucent face bright image flashed of many a thing and folk that passed in wandering with colours fresh of tree and flower here kept my soul a secret bower and in the garden all the year one plied his craft of gardener nor slept between the moon and sun nor ever was his labour done for this was time who told my hours and gave and took away my flowers and one beside him fed a fire with listless hands whose whole desire was not therein but far away she watched an ever-dying day she smiled sometimes and oft she wept but through her tears her watch she kept time brought her flowers she cast the same to feed the hungering tongues of flame yea all men know the dreadful dame pale memory ye read her name 
in my soul's house always to be dwelt spirits five for company and fair they were in form and face and well my soul's white house did grace for one the chambers garnished fit with boughs and flowers and them she lit by night and day for she was sight and ruled all my soul's delight her sister to my table bare sweet pleasure of earth's fruits and rare as every season brought its mead or ever as my soul had need another made sweet incense rise from out a censer in such wise that mingled sweet of every kind and let the slender smoke enwind the pillars of the roof and send the pleasant mist from end to end the while another yet of these with music soft my soul would please to every thought in every mood she made her tuneful interlude she touched the string she ruled the lute and many a soft harmonious flute that mocked the birds in leafy choir but oft this spirit would aspire to lift the solemn organ's voice and this would be her dearest choice till with its deeper soul imbued my soul forgot its solitude yet one there was both dumb and blind who yet was wise in every kind and many a thing her hand could teach in silent service serving each these watched the house and kept it fair as each its several part had care thus sat my soul and talked with these in its white porch among the trees and each brought word what she had seen of all that range that region green for many folk passed to and fro as flew the hours or footed slow one came in garment green and pale across the hill adown the dale and blossoms in her hand she bore a swallow skimmed her path before it was a herald bright of spring and this the song that she did sing there fell a day of sun and shower spring stirred within her leafless bower she sent me from her wintry home go forth and tell the world i come beneath the windows of the dawn i took my way by lake and lawn i saw of flowers the firstling born i gathered of the flowering thorn and from the dale and from the down i passed into the sleeping town along the stony streets to spill my flowers by door and window-sill but they were like the eyes of men sleep-locked though some were open then i saw within a darkened room an old man lying in the gloom he saw my flowers and then he sighed and turned upon his bed and died i took my way with soundless feet but none i met my steps to greet save when a wakeful babe me spied and stretched his dimpled arms and cried they hushed his voice nor knew his will i left the city sleeping still she ceased her song and there was hush as after when the tuneful thrush hath warbled clear the wood is still ere yet again the choir sings shrill for very joy and then i heard among the grass time grind and gird upon his blade he stooped to slay and soon before his feet there lay the fallen emblems of the hours a harvest sheaf of spring's first flowers which she beside him gathering flung into the fire the while they sung and thus i heard their voices chime the song of memory and time time springtide come and winter going flower to seed and seed to sowing seed and harvest reaping mowing memory life beginning and life ending life his substance ever spending time to life his little lending time hark the winged winds are calling clouds the young year's path appalling blooms of spring like snow are falling memory snows of spring green earth bestrewing wasted hopes must i be ruing spring of life there's no renewing and after these had ceased their song a company there passed along in divers weed and changeful mien and glad or sad athwart my green their fluttering robes of dark or pale like leaves adrift on autumn gale and they like shadows o'er the grass before my porch did singly pass but through the house their voices rang tune tongue like bells as thus they sang song of the hours between the gates of night and morn with sleepless hands and sleepless eyes we watch the sun and moon outworn the silent stars that sink and rise 
in hidden chambers of the night the thread of fate we sit and spin through death and life in dark and light from life's slim staff to wind and win with jointed hands and parting feet the work is wove and still undone but still we tread time's measure fleet as through the glass the sand is spun with linked hands and feet that wind between the pillars of the day around the house the garland bind for spring hath come we cannot stay they passed a change came o'er the sky i heard a shout i heard a cry a horn's far sound the woods awoke and sudden from the thicket broke in my soul's sight a thing of flame and after swift a horseman came a youth intent upon the chase but ever as he urged his pace one laid her hands upon his rein and from that end would him restrain while did the stirring horn resound and in the leash each panting hound pressed hard to slip the tightened chain what would that eager hunter gain some magic thing whose form and hue still changed as he did close pursue a flame a bubble of the air a woman marvellously fair yea every shape it hath in turn that makes man's troubled soul to burn and doth his baffled sight elude to leave the world a solitude again the sounding horn did bray the hounds were slipped and broke away and swift throughout the close they sped still as the changeful quarry led till far beyond the open green they flashed the forest stems between and soon were lost in night of wood again i heard time's interlude time whence the way and whither wending seeks hot youth till eld descending leaves unread the secret pending what is life truth answers never darkly flows the secret river but its springs are hid for ever what is truth man's long endeavour finds the web but not the weaver sleeps the riddle none may sever as it was in time's beginning then as now while fate is spinning man her clue would still be winning my soul knew rest no more that day i heard time's voice sink far away and long did muse till light was gone still sitting in my porch alone strange thoughts like flashes went and came and dreams of love and hopes of fame with dim desires that inly burned dead hopes that rose again and yearned to follow still that unknown quest and failing fluttered back to rest then had my soul a vision strange as far in spirit did i range and i beheld a far dim plain dyed in day's last tyrian stain and through its dark and desert ground a gleaming vein of water wound where lonely piles of ruin old loomed vast with hollow chambers cold where horror dwelt with night and death and filled they were with ghostly breath but there amid the gathering glooms among the temples and the tombs one wandered in a pilgrim's guise who fixed afar his wistful eyes his footsteps kept the river's side a glowing lamp his feet did guide that shone upon that desert's dearth as like a star there fallen to earth and moving through the twilight dim by shattered arch and column slim with staff and scrip he kept his way among those wrecks of ancient day far far upon that desert land half buried in her grave of sand the ancient head of egypt rose and still sublime in death's repose great memnon kept his awful throne out watching day and night alone and where the greek laid stone on stone the faces of his gods were shown when to the world a youth there came fair wisdom power and beauty's dame here a not pallas had his choice but aphrodite won his voice the crumbling strength of mighty rome her grave her cradle and her home there stood the emblems of her reign the arch that would the world sustain and still does span in legioned range the gulf of time the waves of change long stood the pilgrim here at gaze as lost in thought of antique days as far his searching eyes could scan beneath the age-worn arches span he marked each age's builded pile loom dimly 
down the endless aisle where shone the winding waters thread a wandering life among the dead until his sight no more could trace its courses from their hidden place wrapped in the clinging mists that shroud the trackless mountains dim with cloud but still his spirit found no home beneath the broad eternal dome at last the pilgrim turned and sighed nor stayed he where a cross beside marked how a greater power and pride did conquer rome and still doth bide full many a stone about that ground made stumbling but of flowers were found none save the sanguined poppy's hue between still sleep and death that grew the pilgrim stayed for sleep nor rest as bent upon some hidden quest nor turned he from his painful way where folk made feast and holiday beneath fair vines and fruited trees as pipe and dance and song them please he seemed the world of men to shun and joyed when he a wood had won sweet cloistered green and roofed above where soft he heard the wooing dove and sound of wandering water near he drank its crystal cup and clear and kept his path beside the stream till he beheld white pillars gleam he passed from green to blossomed boughs that compassed fair a secret house still music drew him to the door swift beat his heart and trembling more he entered to a gold dim space flame lit before an altar dais rose garlanded most fair and meet and all the air was still and sweet but over these in fairer case shone the clear resemblance of a face he knelt before that altar stone the anthem soothed his heart's faint tone and seraph voices high and soft in measured cadence quired aloft or sailed in tempest gusts of sound when passion's music shook the ground filled was the pilgrim's soul and bowed till in his stress he cried aloud o oh, love this is thy holy place give me i pray my lady's grace end of section three section four of renaissance a book of verse by walter crane this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org love's labyrinth when summer reigned in leafy sheen i found me in a garden green deep hidden from the sun's gold edge beneath a rose hung thorny hedge upon a space of cool fair grass whereon not yet the scythe should pass though in the meadows was it laid where time was stooping in the shade as foot by foot with measured sweep his engine cleft the grassy deep and thence fresh fragrance wafted sweet the smell of roses blown to meet mixed in the drowsed air and stole in slumber to my dreamful soul full long i lay in leafy lair until upon the murmurous air one murmur grew with deepening note and soon my sleeping ear it smote and woke a trouble in my breast a joyful pain more sweet than rest like as the voice of plaining strings when magic hands the music brings out of the vile soul in sound that hath a power when speech is bound to lift the whirlwind and the wail of passion's tempest and the veil of dumb desires and hopes that cry until the strong winds sinking die though still the wrought waves strike the shore above them shrill a voice dust soar or with the soft gale falling low to lull the soul sings sweet and slow and folds the fluttering wings of peace so thrilled that music through the trees the leaves were stirred upon the boughs the petals shaken from a rose as though a spirit moved anear then from the hedge a voice broke clear o time o time thy dials stay and lend to love 
thy little day and make him free of thy domain and thou shalt not have less of gain for he must pay thee back again in penal hours of longing pain o time o time thy labours stay between the sun and moon to-day tell not thy hours of morn and noon lest they should find us swift and soon to steal from us our secret joy and give us to the world's annoy let love be king in hour and place and give thy garden for his chase set all with lilies fair and white and roses for his heart's delight both red and crimson dark and pale like snow that hidden fire doth veil yea give them on their thorny stem before thy breath shalt shatter them that chaplets love may bind for those who wander in his tangled clothes time ceasing not his toil far heard gave back to love this answering word love to time dost thou come suing love with all thy debt accruing time can give thee no renewing ask the hearts thy sceptre schooleth seek the kings thy kingship ruleth who is he that time befooleth rest thee love in thine own city but of my dominion quit ye time is hard and hath no pity erst for king didst thou disown me wouldst thou o'er thy kingdom crown me thee i serve when thou hast won me slave and servant no man's master they who will me slow or faster urge me to their own disaster lo this garden for thy going fair and sweet life blooms in growing gather ere its leaves be strowing hive thy honey sweet bestowing take life's apples red and glowing ere they fall to earth unknowing days and hours perforce time gives thee by the sun's swift wheel that drives ye rest you merry time survives thee his shadow passed his voice had died and from the rosy covert side clear shining in his goodly head love to my soul came forth and said arise o soul and go with me and thou shalt read my book and see things hidden from the wise and know the height of joy the depth of woe and hear the seas of passion roll and scan the dim strange human scroll the writing of its speechless lore and poesy's unfathomed store the mystic birth of song and art in painted chambers of the heart love's histories of bliss and strife and woven mysteries of life yea all that in love's house do dwell between the doors of heaven and hell now in this garden lay apart a space contrived with cunning art where whoso entered at its gate might choose of pleasant paths and straight green walled in privet rose and yew anon that interlaced and drew the wildered white still to and fro who wist not if to turn or go amid the close entangled ways where oft for his yet more amazed soft voices wandering called his name and through the leaves sweet music came clear faces showed like sudden light to vanish from his longing sight ere he might hope of help to win the secret bliss hid far within few scape from out that pleasance hole few gain the inmost golden goal full many wander there forlorn or come out thence sore wounded torn to weep their wasted lives forspent thither by love my soul was bent soon in the green maze sweet and still i heard the brown and blackbird trill where linked lanes and alleys through love led me by his secret clue and off the scented briar would cling or in the hedge some fluttering thing shake soft adown a summer snow of roses bloom in overblow among the leaves all fair bedight and pranked with buds of red and white but still by these love's footsteps led 
dim paths before him turned and fled full oft some sweet or anguished face would part the leaves to seek his grace for many folk did wander there both gleaming knights and dames most fair and o'er the level hedge and trim fair showed in quaint attire and slim of samite broidery and brocade as folk of passed time portrayed by cunning painters skilled full well that mid so goodly sights did dwell and there about the stems were hung sweet names and legends poets sung ye wrought on scrolls and tablets fine and bound with knots that true loves twine and off the lute's full tender strain amid the rose leaves made soft plain as songs were heard in women's fame that crowned singers sweet proclaim prophets and kings of lyre and pen who sound the hearts of silent men that hold their word as treasure trove in the immortal book of love these all were past and in a while love showed my soul a dim green isle and far at end a stone-built stair that led us from the woody lair forth issuing through a night of trees to know anew the day's increase and there a fragrant arbor found with clinging jasmine close embound soon in this leafy ambush set love bade my soul look forth and let sight wonder at its might or will then saw i those that wandered still lost in the green and covert ways and all the secret of the maze how there as folks distraught misled sought lovers for their lover who fled far from them or unwitting past the prisoning hedge that shut them fast how oft their eyes met far amain in severed paths that kept them twain how after toil and weary pace some met at last with shamefast face and silent lips or coldly masked with wintry speech their hearts that asked for utterance and leaped and cried love's dear deliverance denied thereby great heaviness and pain had then my soul and turned again to ask of him who stood beside what hope for these might yet be tied clothed in his godhead strong he stood he bent his bow above the wood and swift the winged arrow left the quivering string what heart it cleft my soul ne'er knew for then the light of falling day dazed all my sight with splendour as the level sun blazed in his gold pavilion spun out of his rays whose burning thread a glorious tapestry outspread with all life's hues commingling blent and ere the golden web was rent by darkness love led me away and passed about the end of day beneath the hanging umbrage dread till grew in sight a summer stead fair corniced roofed and pillared clean closed in the midmost heart of green and girt about with garlands round clear built upon a pleasant ground that gardened was and set with flowers which had the speech of love and powers after that they are dead to keep sweet thoughts in heart and cherished deep also of mythic trees and rare that grew in love's high region there my soul did mark fair daphne's leaf the almond bloom for love and grief when phyllis died and syrinx reed like sprung of legendary seed the sun's broad flower that shows his flame and blooms in clytes sculptured fame amidst them fair and high up rose the carven images of those that wrought with men for good or ill and gave good gifts and godlike skill and reverence had upon the earth yea still in all man's strife and mirth have part and glory yet for him the mingled cup of life they brim as gods who here love's lordship own casting their crowns before his throne their marble image broken fell where leaped a water from its well gemmed in the green and grassy space before the pillars of the place where now my soul loves travel brought 
soon trod we both the marble court and passed into a painted hall most goodly wrought on roof and wall with dreams and golden mysteries of love and love's rich histories wherein dumb thoughts of heart and brain took form and speech and breathed again natheless ere we the end might win was hung a veil fine woven thin but through the veil a fire glowed dim and faint heard music soft did swim till out of vague and murmurous tone rose up a voice to take its throne last night my lady talked with me as on a green hill i and she sat close where erst alone i stood beneath the dusk-leaved ilex wood the earth was gathered to her rest sweet silence lay upon her breast well nigh asleep save that she heard the wandering water's silver word the sun had kissed the earth's dark lips that grow so ruddy ere he dips wine coloured to his golden rim as purple evening pours for him low stooped his head as he would drink till out of sight we saw him sink and with his splendour in our eyes full orbed we watched the great moon rise rose tinged in the dim sky shone she like venus from the opal sea so grew her glory in our sight till in her face we saw love's light love's light in hers like flame on flame yea very love in presence came between the fires of moon and sun he stood like dawn ere night begun clear aureoled his golden head his eyes our burning hearts well read and in the sanctuary of my soul i won of love the golden goal end of section four the dividing gulf by walter crane read for librivox dot org a gulf divideth heaven and hell whose depth no fathom line can tell a gulf is fixed between two souls as cold and deep whichever rolls to hinder messengers of light who else would wing in welcome flight with water from love's living spring and peace to the tormented bring but now if any will to pass from hence to thence alas alas the gulf is fixed they cannot go and all unaided lie in woe sad souls unto their succour near and yet so far as though they were divided by an ocean plain and so thoughts die within each brain that might in interchanging wed and fruitfulness and plenty spread to clothe and crown the naked fields and give them bread for barren yields that waste beneath a sunless sky their empty ears or blighted die but as when we have longed to greet some wished for one we never meet their semblance still may please our eyes their presence in our dreams arise so though lone thoughts ne'er meet their kind or meeting in the darkness blind know not they meet falls there no flash upon the waters wide that wash the silent shores of either mind and both by sudden pathway find shines there no light we never sought on all the ways of toil and thought a flash in momentary course like lightning from an unseen source that in the trembling of a star shows all world anear and far when in a flood of flame intense the gulf is banished from our sense and in one moment bridging space two spirits stand as face to face End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Valley of Deliverance by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org One sea-blue infinitude of silent hills That fold like waves that crested are and smooth the wide-spread veil that slowly eve instills with misty lakes and all thy summits soothe two in baths of amber light where melt and merge the wandering purples into green and gold 
athwart the slumbrous fields and moorland verge or sailed by slow cloud shadows softly rolled three with alternations new and grateful change of burning tones to cool and magic show as off the opalescent sea do range or in the sun-built arch transfused do glow for o silent hills ye hold a meaning more than speech ye are not voiceless o ye vales but eloquent of time and treasured lore of memory and filled with untold tales five that well nigh dim my gazing eyes with tears whereas they follow those familiar lines dear as the features shaped by hopes and fears on friendship's face oft read and sought for signs six for dear to me the crags the weather-worn the slopes of green the waving woodland towers whose crested pageantry of leaves adorn the shadowed graves of faded summer hours seven full well i know the belts of larch that fringe the dark verge of the lonely moor which seems the limit of the world touched with the tinge of dying light and burned with day's last beams eight and oft as now i pressed the purple bloom the heather plumaged breast of this high moor and heard as now i hear the wandering boom of these winged gleaners of the honeyed store nine o oh, well-loved vale for i am bound to thee by subtle threads of thought that memory weaves yea sitting in thy shadow liberty like dawn first knew i opening life's leaves ten e'en then when first i tasted of the tree and day-spring of new knowledge touched mine eyes that erst were sealed as other books to me until upon thy hills new light should rise eleven until my soul new-born within this vale should learn of nature in her age-worn book and strive beyond the starry void to scale the dim unknown or in truth's glass to look twelve on life and life's dark mystery which broods and clings a shadow to the sad-eyed world born in the horror of primeval woods and in death's cloud impenetrable furled thirteen beyond the gathering years since first i knew thee happy vale my yearning spirit reads beyond night's mist on thy horizon blue where glow day's embers ere the night succeeds fourteen the legends rich of unforgotten time azure and white and grey enfolded days that long have passed away until the chime of brief on lingering hours their restful ways fifteen and even now clear imaged on my brain their semblance comes again i see them move in long procession slow with joy or pain enrobed with faces hid in eyes of doubt or love sixteen until the day which died with yestern sun begins to merge in that unending line and soon her lingering sister will be won for on her face the light has ceased to shine seventeen so pass the days with days unborn to die and gather them to years and time's swift pace but we would fain forecast futurity or read fate's rune upon the sky's calm face eighteen and i could well believe that in the shade of this still veil the secret sign lies hid the secret that shall shape my life unsaid as in a casket treasured with close lid nineteen mid fir woods dark or tumbled crags unknown or in brown deeps where swift the river flows and among tumultuous rocks whence i have heard vague murmurings oft times beneath the boughs twenty but silence with her finger locks the lips when stand we watching at futura's gate though eager thought would climb and climbing slips while all unwatched each hour doth carve our fate end of poem this recording is in the public domain
the unknown shore by walter crane read for librivox dot org one there is no voice there is no voice or answer from the unknown shore turn turn again there is no choice but life or death we know no more two yet thought in art and song awakes still hope doth speak and reason brings new light to men and wisdom takes sweet comfort from most lowly things three have loveliness or glory fled hath love or beauty passed away is poesy or fancy dead when light returns with every day four sweet hope and beauty cannot die enshrined as one in heaven's blue and still eternal as the sky is good and knowledge ever new five and nevermore rolls on the fight of good and evil by the sea but on the waters falls a light from golden ages yet to be six hear how they cry from every side the voices from the deepening strife the fields are white the world is wide arise take heart take hope take life end of poem this recording is in the public domain The West Wind by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium, in February 2017. Wild wind, thy tameless spirit lifts my mind. Thou, all night long, the troubled earth hast torn, and tossed the stormy trees until the morn, which struggles now unto its noon, half blind with those wide locks which ye have cast across the face of heaven, scarcely showing through her eyes between are still of steadfast blue and still look calm above the woods ye toss as they were wrathful waves of that green main from whence ye come beyond the sunset's grave to freshen on the sunburnt hills and lave the summer thirsty fields with the gracious rain hark in the wood thy voice a lion roars beneath thy breath upon the parched hill shudders the wasted grass and shrieketh shrill as though it feared thee but thy spirit soars to lash the fossil waves of hill and dale ye may not move yet melted make appear their solid sides and robed in rains ye bear across the valley like a falling veil but night or day thy ceaseless song to me makes melody and music wild and free and i rejoice to drink thy breath for ye do bring the sound and savour of the sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain the new light by walter crane read for librivox dot org by larry wilson awake o world from thy long sleep arise for a new light breaks in reddening skies shake off your rust-eaten fetters ye slaves and claim the freedom of winds and of waves unwind o oh, unwind all the swathing clothes of bondage and ignorance nations woes break the dark might of enchantment's spell burst all thy bonds and the chorus swell Kindle on every high hill a clear fire, plant in the cities, on tower and spire, the banner of freedom. Wide let it wave over sea and land, and over the grave of buried oppression, and chains decayed of tyrant's power, till the ghosts shall be laid of fraud and violence, bloodshed and war. And burned in the flame of freedom's fair star, all wrong shall be dust and ashes on earth dead leaves from whose death shall spring a new birth which shall spread and grow like a fruitful tree and under its branches shall live the free end of poem this recording is in the public domain hymn of free peoples by walter crane read for librivox dot org by sonia hymn of free peoples o kindreds people strong that earth's large arms enfold against the powers that work your wrong in common cause make bold from north from east and west beneath the southern star in bonds of slavery oppressed in cruel arms of war from east and south and north 
from desert cities shade from living tombs of toil come forth where rich man's gold is made from north from west and east o starved and meagre fed be gathered to the equal feast the earth for all hath spread beneath life's healing tree truth's fountains crystal flow let all the nations kindred be the joy of life to know and let each soul rejoice who in that meat is strong and hunger stayed let heart and voice be filled with a new song for freedom like the sun hath risen on the world this hour a new age is begun a stainless scroll unfurled old things have passed away the curse of gold and gore the law of love all peoples sway and war shall be no more no more to joyless toil shall labor's hands be chained no more shall fraud have power to spoil man's equal rights regained one hope one joy one light united all men know and from all lands with gathering might the voice of truth shall go and far and wide proclaim defying tyrants ban writ in all hearts like tongues of flame the brotherhood of man end of poem this recording is in the public domain twelve sonnets of love one through six by walter crane read for librivox dot org one love's sanctuary no more i go to worship with the crowd in christian temples pagan now to me no dim cathedral hears me pray aloud i sing no credo as it used to be though kneeling not beneath the roof of rome or in protesting fanes i have a shrine a holiest of holies love's sweet home on whose white altar lies life's bread and wine there oft in saddened times and weary hours to secret sanctuary do i flee where one sweet presence soothes like breath of flowers to whom their incense rises ceaselessly for there though not a roman devotee sweet virgin mary i do worship thee two love's heraldry i gave to thee at parting dear a rose encrimsoned with the hue of love's warm lips but yet it faded when compared to those wherefrom my soul unfailing honey sips and thou didst plant it in the snowy lawn which veiled the pure treasures of thy breast as when we see o'er earth by winter drawn the white sky covering in spotless rest warm ghouls on argent like a blazoned field the hues of life and death in red and white a fair device for any knightly shield nor needing motto to proclaim its might henceforth i bear it on my battle crest till in thine arms from life's alarms i rest three the solace of love in my heart's chamber cold in day's white glare sat love disconsolate with tattered wings and brooding on the memory of lost things that erst made glad those walls so wan and bare came hope then unto him and bade him look upon the brightness of the cloudless hours and on the buds of yet unopened flowers but love being blind all blank was nature's book sleep came to him and would have brought him peace but dreams awoke desire whose torturing flame made worse his case and left him agony till one with wreathed brows for his release unto his fingers gave a stringed frame and then love wept and sang his pain to thee four passion music the air grows faint within the shrine of love and from his altar rose leaves fall away as smoke of incense dims the dying day that crimsons on the golden roof above 
but slowly stealing soon the organ plains with choiring voices in a tender song which shakes my soul as with a tempest strong still as the music rolleth on refrains now lifted light upon melodious wave my spirit rises on each beating wing that near unto the gates of bliss me bring full soon cast down and bowed by thunder tones he falls upon the ground and weeps and moans such madness doth love's votaries enslave five love's anchorite love's anchorite within my lonely cell his breviary i learn you every day and aves to my sainted mary say as all my rosary i careful tell while on thy picture sweet my fond eyes dwell or rapt upon thy treasured story poor which ending leaves me yet to hunger more and still a thirst to seek again the well yet all love's calendar i follow through and each fair day where memory shows thy sign keep holy unto thee in prayer and song so every season brings to thee its due but while thy table set with corn and wine fasting i keep love's lenten tide so long six love's garden in my heart's garden winter dark and bare love sought for flowers to make a wreath for thee which since the sun was gone he scarce might see in all the waste and time was gardener there who yet a little bloom will hardly spare but with remorseless hand still prunes away and still his scythe he sharpeneth every day so love was left with empty hands to fare till hope had led him to a little well that in this desert kept a joyful spot made sapphire with the eyes of flowers love knew as though from heavenly seed their harvest grew that soon into his reaping fingers fell which bring you these sweet sweet forget me not end of poems this recording is in the public domain Twelve Sonnets of Love, seven through twelve, by Walter Crane. Read for LibriVox.org. Seven Love Solitude. Filled with the breath of love, my soul knows change throughout its troubled region day by day, still as the breaking fire up climbs its way from scarlet dawn through fervent noon to range until the fainting eve grown wan and pale swoons in the arms of close embracing night that putteth forth her spells of dreamful might and sweet enchantments till the starry veil is cloven by the gleaming shafts of morn ascending new with all his glittering train to bring me peace or strange tempestuous pain or soft wind singing in the sacred grove that keeps thy shrine and where i talk with love watching the far-off sea whence hope is born eight love's hope joy like the flashes of a fitful sun falls on my storm worn heart and kindling dies in wandering gleams about the changeful skies cloud built with tempest towers and wind undone for winds make desolate the day begun wild on my path that climbs a bleak green hill among the writhen thorns oft traversed chill with the breath of march until the ridge is won wherefrom i think to gain some hopeful sign as range mine eyes the saddened landscape round that keeps my soul's white house whence i return with thoughts that may not utterly repine but hearing even in the strong wind sound the shout of coming spring which makes me burn nine loves doubt doubt hope and fear all day within my breast have clanged in cruel war where none prevail 
though their fierce cries have rent the sacred veil when in love's sanctuary i sought to rest since brazen morn awoke this wild alarm so have they striven long with clashing swords of two-edged thought since fell the words upon my soul from herald lips of harm whose message strange a fiery hand impressed in character that burns my mazed sight yet loud with iron hands they tear and smite but through the cloud of strife i see hope's crest rise loftier and his voice above the rest grows calm and clearer with the falling night ten love's garland young love with rosy wings came through a mead where on before the feet of spring had gone along a slender brook that wound and shone by stems made bright with blooms of fruitful deed he gathered as he went of such fair seed as spring upon her grassy ways had sown and in his fingers wove a garland crown that faded not or drooped or died for need full soon the stream had brought him to a space of orchard green where maidens sweet were met with time's frail gifts around his dial stone and these among thou sat'st in such sweet grace that seeing thee love on thy dear head set his magic wreath and crowned thee on my throne eleven love's arrows i saw young love make trial of his bow in may's green garden where he shot his dart nor recked if any nigh beheld his art but other eyes did mark him as i know for my sweet lady sat anear his throw and i with her and joined heart to heart so that we might not feel the bitter smart love leaveth there when time doth force us go we heard love's arrows falling in the grass or watched them quiver in the targe below yet few to us came nigh nor might they pass beyond our feet which trembled when they came whose hearts were not the quarry for his aim that in love's chase fell stricken long ago twelve love's harvest i stand to gaze across the year's long fields that have the tinge of autumn and their gold gathered by careful hours on lee and wold rich spoils of time that he to love upyields who yet amid fair corn his sickle wields though harvest's done and summer groweth old well stored barns and orchards he doth hold whose wealth against the steely winter shields unto my feet the days like full-eared sheaves have fallen one by one time bound and born to be the bread of love through barren days e'en such dear heritage the sweet year leaves and life to live again loves night and morn whose light thou art whose glory is their praise end of poems this recording is in the public domain part two later poems herald of spring by walter crane read for librivox dot org by larry wilson sweet bird what makes thee glad beneath the sky so wan and sad and leafless poplars thin and gray bowed down before the wintry sway what tuneful thought of days gone by doth make thee sing or knowest thou why thy soul is lifted up sweet bird or dost thou hear spring's voice unheard of earth that sleeps nor dreaming minds the herald blast of trumpet winds that make old winter's fortress quail and force him cast his coat of mail what secret bower thy shape doth keep close hidden by the buds that sleep thy voice the first lean bloom that blows breaks joyful through the wintry boughs that bear thy song of promise meet for happy hours when lovers greet when every leaf-lorn tree shall bear flower fruit and song upon the air and summer's choir is full and gay the soft winds on the sun's feast day 
sweet bird as thou dost sing my soul doth partly catch the speechless whole of joyful pain that lifts the wings of thy sequestered music things remembered half and half forgot of sight or sound or sense begot confused in love's ambrosial streams and hidden in the house of dreams as frail sweet scent of flowers that hold past time and days in some book's fold which when the leaves are turned again doth warm like wine the wintry brain o bird thy heart doth sing in me i hear what thou dost hear i see upon a high green land untrod of men upon the flower-wrought sod the feet of spring and her bright throng break from the woods with shout and song soft piping winds with pleasant cheer before her go her path to clear sweet maids come with her and behind light-footed is the lifting wind some bear her canopy on high and warm gleams gild it from the sky some strew with flowers the flower-strewn ground some bind them garlands some are bound and still with all happy rout fleet little loves wind in and out some hide in maiden's fluttering weed and ply their pretty arts nor heed while wilful gusts make sport like them with mantles fold and garments hem or some more bold soft vengeance wreak on lifting hair and glowing cheek but scarce the wood hath set them free some forceful sprite in winter's fee to snatch spring's garland would make bold whom shrill the shrinking maids do scold until the sun their champion bright doth drive aback the wintry night whose wild assault being overthrown far in the woodland makes he moan and gentle spring with all her train doth hold high court on earth again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Thoughts in a Hammock by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Thoughts in a Hammock Rocked as in some fairy boat By swift fancy set afloat Twixt the oceans blue and green Of grass beneath and sky serene Where the streams of dusk and day Meet and mingle far away On the universal tide Still with time and life to glide boat that pendant mid the trees swingeth moored yet sails the seas stem and stern from east to west bound upon an unknown quest past the marge of night and day blanched or strewn with starry spray by the oar strokes of the blood glides the shallop of my mood on the windings of the flood shadowed by the summer wood dusk with dreams yon leaves that play with the falling blooms of may like the web the fates do spin helpless men to cradle in hung with life upon a thread here i swing and over my head maze of apples boughs and leaves meshed wherein my thought and weaves tapestry phantasmic strange shot with shifting dyes of change so my shallow bark and frail spreads a rich emblazoned sail filled as now the summer breeze fans my brain and stirs the trees where a hidden heart of fire strives the moon in her desire still to pierce the leafy fret her celestial seat to get cynthia's self that silver shape boskage dark she doth escape long her gleaming body hid forth from its embraces slid doth naked glorious emerge upon the lucent starry verge let me linger in the wood hear the sound of pipings rude watch the shapes of nymph and fawn centaurs fleet across the lawn satyrs brown in rhythmic dance by the stream great pan perchance hidden in the vocal reed all the happy antique breed i would turn again the book yet again to steal a look back to where time's firstling ran arboreal ancestral man wooing shy his dusky mate wild-eyed half articulate in his rude canoe askance see him poise his flint-tipped lance flashing in the ardent noon over the sedgy broad lagoon when thames reeds the river horse crushed in his unconscious force 
swinging on the pendant bough had the sweet content enow basking in the primal sun recked he how his race should run how for forest night of trees cities spreading dense as these where the shade of gilded pride starved and savage man should hide human vampires hawks and flies gliding snakes and lustrous eyes dainty beauty plumaged fair hollow masks for smiling care hopeless toil that smileth not misery untold forgot where the throng of fashion flaunts where in dark unwholesome haunts lurks a darker race to prowl desert streets when night doth scowl desert stony streets and bare neath a strange electric glare fiery eyed to track them down homeless on the heartless town ah could early man or late set his ways or nature's straight who life's stream doth careless pour lets the cup brim over and over who will drink or drinking dream with the chosen skim the cream struggle with the ravening swine for residue or helpless wine lazarus at dives gate dives at his feast of state rising with a hungry heart as one by one life's guests depart could we chain those monsters up that on human lives do sup shameless lust of rule and gold lawless greed grown overbold vice and drink with palsied hand riding down the joyless land then if humanity could be from these and other tyrants free to win its bread to win i wot vine and fig and breathing plot joy in work and joy in leisure love and art to fill life's measure force and fraud might vainly rage to see new-born the golden age sailing thus as thought doth steer with the moon through cloud and clear fancy fluttering at the prow sirens singing soft and low from the opal shores and streams where they dye the cloth of dreams from the present and the past have i touched the land at last voyaging the world around yet anchored still to english ground june eighteen eighty four end of poem this recording is in the public domain the sirens three dedicatory sonnet by walter crane read for librivox dot org by Laurie wilson to william morris the maj and nishapur in english tongue beside the northern sea i wandering read with chaunt of breaking waves each verse was said till storm possessed my heart in answer sung and to the winds my ship of thoughts i flung and drifted wide upon the ocean dread of space and time ere thought and life were bred till hope did cast the anchor and i clung the book of omar saw i limned in gold and decked with vine and rose and pictured paws inwrought by hands of one well skilled and bold in art and poesy and freedom's cause hope of humanity and equal laws to him and to this hope be mine and scrolled in the poem this recording is in the public domain the sirens three stands as one through twenty by walter crane read for librivox dot org by jason in panama one lost on a sleepless sea without avail my soul's ship drifted wide with idle sail and slow pulsating oars that night's blue gulf beat noiselessly to time's recurring tale two the rolling hours like waves broke one by one upon the tide of thought time's sands outrun and cloudy visions hovered o'er my bed piled to the stars full soon like cloud undone three as like the wan moon through her fleecy sea my spirit clove their rack unceasingly and struck at last upon an unknown ground more still than sleep more strange than dreamlands be four 
The echoes of lost thoughts wild music made, Like sirens heard above the winds that played, Above the rhythmic waves' tumultuous tone, Upon the hollows of that coast decayed. 5. Yea, on the strand they stood, the sirens three, No more, and golden now, and dark to be, Whose vocal harps are love, and hope, and grief, To these they sang, and waved their hands to me. 6. Who thence unto the shore, escaping, clung, As from the dread insatiate ocean's tongue That lapped the barren sand, and evermore above its vain recoil the sisters sung seven prone on that unknown land outcast forlorn my soul lay watching for the eyes of morn as from a dying universe adrift a naked life to what dim world new-born eight all former things had passed the sea's salt tears from youth's frail ship had washed false hopes and fears and relics treasured once bestrewed the sand wrapped in the clinging weed the sea maid wears nine the bodies of lost faith and love outcast spurned by the waves and clinging to the mast were flung upon the shore mid drift and wreck Time's fragile shells, which frailer lives outlast. 10. As at the world's end left, the last of men, or ere the first was sphered beyond his ken, was I, mid tumbled cosmic fragments cast, a babe at play within a mammoth's den. 11. Mid bones of power extinct, and its lost prey, with shreds and shards of unknown primal day, the formless future and the past forgot, the broken statue and the sculptor's clay. 12. The blue-breast bird of space his fan outspread, and shook the starry splendor o'er my head, a wood of eyes that wonder at the world, glassed in the world's eyes wonder, scanned and read. 13. Each burning orb that did the sky emblaze Upon my spirit lone cast piercing gaze, World beyond world and ringed, And suns of flame shot from night's spangled cloud Their storm of rays. 14. As doth the glass to one bright point intense Draw the sun's fervor to our shrinking sense, so on my soul the concentrated fire of countless suns that moment did condense fifteen my brain an instant's atlas seemed to bear the universe immense and all its care for thought's frail arms intolerable weight since nature's triumph still is man's despair sixteen untilled unknown the trackless region spread which thought belated wanderer doth tread where like river flashing through the night the milky way its myriad star foam shed seventeen cast from what vital source what teeming brain by blind persistent force from fiery rain suns moons and stars transmuted globed and hung the dew of space upon its blue campaign. 18. Trod by the feet of time as he doth go, a laborer night and morn to reap and sow. Who counts the glittering drops, the spheres that fall, or marvels they should hold such weight of woe? 19. Each drop a desert, or a battleground of life in its arena ringed around where without quarter wears the endless war till death the hunter slips his famished hound twenty here circling with the horses of the sun man's fateful race from day to day is run bound in this narrow ring his crown his grave still as the world for each is lost or won 
End of stanzas one through twenty. This recording is in the public domain. The Sirens Three stanzas twenty one to forty by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Twenty one. Then, like a homeless one, my spirit turned for shelter neath the roofless void and spurned from the star desert to the stony one scanned the dark waste where yet no hearth fire burned twenty two but through the veil of night around me there rose towering shapes clothed in the voiceless air like kings enthroned amid their powers decay statue and ruined shrine and temple bare twenty three dolmen and sphinx and greek or gothic fane the shattered caskets of man's winged brain whose flight hath left them empty desolate sublime in ruin on the crumbling plain twenty four the perished bodies frail that once did house his restless soul and heard his sacred vows to his own likeness dressed in speech or stone ere he forswore them for some fairer spouse twenty five he sought for truth and cried where dost thou dwell ten thousand tongues replied but none could tell they held their peace and then the stones did cry lo truth sits naked by the wayside well twenty six she sitteth naked since they drove her out from babel of the creeds to wastes of doubt there hath she wandered long in dens and caves through customs winter and through reasons drought twenty seven they would have cloaked her as a shameful thing force brought her chains and fraud a marriage ring but truth affrighted fled the market-place where lies were coined in gold and craft was king twenty eight and still she flies from sacred fount and school when man defiles or doth his kind be fool and still they wait the halt the lame the blind though truth the angel troubleth not the pool twenty nine a wandering spirit in this street of tombs I sought her yet who still to travel dooms from hostel unto hostel o'er the waste her votaries the fitful lamp illumes thirty but ere the dawn stood trembling at night's gate dark as the night i reached a portal great wide to the homeless wind defaced and bare while yet it spake of power and antique state thirty one of pillared hall and chambers large and fair which thought and art had carven and made rare as life by life was laid with stone on stone or flowed through marble veins the beams to bear thirty two and flowered aloft in capital and frieze as roof and wall high rose with years increase with all did slow decay still gild and stain or like a stealthy robbers climbed to seize thirty three strange lights from windows glared and stranger sound of mingled mourners grief and revel round sad discords from a world's disorder rung with music broke upon the desert bound thirty four a fountain in the forecourt sullen slept one wintry tree beside it wind beswept and shorn of its last leaves which strewed the stone like one above the water drooped and wept thirty five and at the threshold on the shattered stair in raiment sad one sate as cloaked in care there too her sister shape in vernal green the lintel old did hang with garlands fair thirty six who then i would have cried art thou that weep 
and why with mourning festal garlands heap why thus though kindred are your hearts in twain o sisters weird this magic house who keep thirty seven this magic house so fair so disarrayed what god what demon first its foundings laid who thus its treasure to oblivion casts still hungering at the gate but never stayed thirty eight and i was answered ere my thought found tongue as pealing from the gate their voices rung like wailing harp and voice together heard with ear intent upon their speech i hung thirty nine let no man ask but he who doth not shrink to stand at gaze upon thought's giddy brink where breaks the endless sea and ebbs and flows the tides of life and death that time doth drink forty time's very house is this his daughters we ruin and renovation thou dost see that sweep or garnish and its chambers fit for grief or joy or whatso guests may be end of stanzas twenty one through forty this recording is in the public domain. The Sirens Three, stanzas forty one through sixty, by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Forty one. Pillared and roofed, it is with nights and days, and windows gemmed in gold or azure space, its table spread with earths for fast or feast between birth's gate and death's where all find place forty two close curtained both with mystery and pain o'erwrought with costly tears and heart-hued stain and love the windows dim hath painted o'er with dreams of dear delight that wax and wane forty three from morn to eve as through the glowing glass his vital sun transfigures as they pass those visionary joys and hopes and fears that mask life's face a dream itself alas forty four but ere they ceased a fairer one forth came with cup of welcome and with torch of flame in floating raiment soft and radiant hair and thus she sang each captive sense to claim forty five dream on o soul or sleep and take thy rest the feast is spread however late the guest let passion drug the cup with secret fire till torturing thought be slain on pleasure's breast forty six where all are masked thy mask shall be thy face call for the best life gives and take thy place at time's long hostel board cast off thy care and rest you merry in dame fortune's grace forty seven vex not thy soul until the reckoning day though life be but the least thou hast to pay stand not too late on pleasure's foaming brink nor yet with cyclus eld outsit the play forty eight time is thine host and ere the day grows old to thee his story strange he shall unfold writ in a half obliterated scroll but pictured fair and graven deep behold forty nine as though a new pandora raised the lid and let life's mystery escape unbid broke sudden on my sight a wonder show as through the portal dark i gazed close hid fifty e'en like as one who sits expectant dumb at gaze before some world's proscenium when rolls the curtain from the painted stage to see life's play past present and to come fifty one the drama of the earth before me rolled the war of good and evil new and old the fight for very life for space for air the sum and cost of being still untold fifty two since when time's brooding bird did patient sit upon her spherid egg the world to wit potent with life 
in ocean, earth, and air, ere ever fawn or flower did people it. 53. Since when from countless germs life's tree did grow, from writhing worms about its roots below, from dragon shapes that clasp its fossil stem, to bear love's fruit and human flowers a row. 54. Where thoughts winged kind among its branches dwell, still fertilized by beauty's potent spell, cast and recast in nature's supple mold, through death and change, and birth's transforming cell. 55. Twas pictured here with boughs outspread through space, blossomed with stars upon the sky's swart face, with globing worlds for fruit that cool or glow as night and day, like leaves their shadows chase. 56. Out of the dream of ages, sleeping fast, out of the dim and unrecorded past, out of the caverns of uncounted time, in life's dark house man saw the sun at last. 57. Inhuman man late come unto the birth, wrapped in the swathing bands of Mother Earth. Long his descent, his pedigree obscure, to his inheritance of strife and dearth. 58. As from the ground the earthworm crawls to light, speechless and blind from antenatal night man rose on earth the bitter strife began man rose on earth and craft did conquer might fifty nine since cruel nature careless of her child left him an outcast on the worldly wild cradled in space and serpent swathed in time and rocked to sleep by death or dream beguiled. 60. I saw him in his cradle at the first, with beasts and savage passions rudely nursed, to snatch uncertain life from nature's hand, niggard or prodigal, through best and worst. End of stanzas 41 through 60. This recording is in the public domain. The Sirens Three stanzas sixty one through eighty by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox dot org by Jason in Panama. Sixty one. He blindly bore the burden of his day with his dumb kindred of the primal clay, whence drew his blood brute instincts, fiery lusts that waste his substance still and tear and slay. Sixty two. A babbling child he sits upon time's sand. To the mute skies he cries, he would command. Heedless he plays with serpents and with fire, With life a toy in his unconscious hand. 63. Yet hath he held it from that early day, Though death did ever plot to snatch away, And snared his tottering steps with dangers thick, Prowling in countless shapes beside his way. 64. Sore was the strife, and little was life's boon Between the toiling sun and wasting moon, With lurid pleasures fierce and horrid right, Blind day outworn, the long, long sleep won soon. 65. Still nature, prodigal, did cast his seed O'er frozen sea or burning zone to breed, Where hand or foot could cling, or heart could beat, man's kind on earth since sprung to flower or weed. 66. The rod of want, the school of bitter need, taught him life's letters, still so hard to read. Use gave him skill, and skill new sense to use. He bent the bow, he bade the plowshare speed. 67. Bread for his body and his soul he sought raiment to cloak him from the cold he bought of ruthless nature toiling brain and hand past all the gates of death his race he brought sixty eight lo infant thought and art man's children fair first tottering from the cave his primal lair babes in the world's wood wandering to and fro 
to touch man's sordid heart and lift his care sixty nine since the first hunter graved his dirk and horn or in the shepherd state was music born when song lay dreaming in the whispering reed ere she discoursed unto the golden morn seventy born of life's travail virtues sweet benign grew like fair daughters of a race divine the pillars of man's house before whose rod evil and good as twisted snakes untwine seventy one but to his roof had fled pale palsied fear the child of death and night but fathered there and nursed by ignorance beside the hearth to cloud his house with all her mystic gear seventy two demon and fetish painted she to scare and veils against the light did weave and wear yea art and thought man's firstlings fain would bind from birth to serve her will her yoke to bear seventy three so man held hand and foot a slave behold between the soldier king and priest of old by force and fraud bound fast as by two chains how long o man how long shall they thee hold seventy four how long again i cried but silence kept her finger on the lips of hope still slept like clouds upon the mountains dreams untold and freedom on the tombs of ages wept seventy five yet like a watcher by a beacon fire amid the lurid gloom and shadows dire wrapped in the cloak of darkness fold on fold i marked through flames portentous shapes aspire seventy six slow streamed the progress vast of humankind out of the primal dark i watched it wind like a full river gleaming towards the sun crested with light but lost in mists behind seventy seven i saw the towering crests of ancient state arise and pass and bow themselves to fate captors of men bound still to conquering time and in their triumph drawn to death's dark gate seventy eight colossal egypt on her car rolled by dragged by her crowd of slaves with lash and cry who now a slave herself is bought and sold and buried in the sand her pride doth lie seventy nine athens supreme with burnished helm and spear in art and arms and wisdom shining clear to other hands hath passed the lamp of life and weep the muses o'er her sculpted bier eighty there clothed as with a robe with power and pride great rome upon her triumph car did ride over the necks of nations and of men unto whose broken wheel still souls are tied End of stanzas 61 through 80. This recording is in the public domain. The Sirens 3, stanzas 81 through 100 by Walter Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. 81. All these I saw as on time's painted page the figure of man's life from age to age was figured like his life of years and hours and glassed his face an infant or a mage eighty two in boyhood bright beneath the grecian sun i saw him stand intent his race to run to touch the golden goal of thought and art and daring all man since hath dared or done eighty three the apple of his life to beauty's hand freely he gave and she so dowered his land that still that fond world takes it for her glass and gazes leaving knowledge and command eighty four in youth a mystic shadow o'er him fell he touched the lover's lute beneath the spell he fought a knight at arms for lady's grace he prayed a monk austere in haunted cell eighty five till nature roused him from his dreams again and reason broke the chains which bound him then 
New knowledge, power, and beauty filled life's cup, and rolled the round world to his manhood's ken. 86. Yet old before his time he sits, outworn with words and wars, upon the seat of scorn, weary of life's vain round, love's fruitless chase, false fortune's whirling wheel, fame's empty horn. 87. For here, in living shape and semblance, shone the passions and the powers man's soul hath won through all his ages, like the starry signs, where through life's year revolves the sleepless sun. 88. The pattern and the form of thoughts untold, the book of being wrought in runes of gold, the twisted net that holds all gain and loss, the birth clothes cover, or the shroud doth fold. 89. The moving tapestry of human date, where lives for threads are crossed in love or hate, between the narrow beams of dark and day, time's shifting loom, the toil of threefold fate. 90. At their eternal task the sisters dread, who spin and weave and shear the slender thread with all its dyes, that doth sustain and fill this tangled web from pole to pole outspread. 91. The arras that doth clothe the house of time, stained with the hues of all man's bliss and crime, the checkered pageant of the changing earth still through its folds doth ever sink and climb. 92. Along the street of days and nights where rolls the world's car onwards and its throng of souls, like captives in a conqueror's triumph chained, compelled by fortune's wheel that none controls. 93. The glittering triumph of youth's golden dreams and ardent manhood in the zenith, beams of love and fame and power that guides the car, and slow pulsed eld still warmed in their last gleams. 94. Masked with the maskers in that endless race, the hours go by at grief's or passion's pace, and cloaked alike in poverty or pride, through all life's masks, death shows his ashen face. 95. The shadow clinging to the feet of life, as unto day doth cleave his silent wife, sower and reaper in the self-same field, twin spirits folded in immortal strife. 96. There good and ill, brothers and bitter foes, do strike the balance of man's joys and woes, and in the traffic of the world's exchange oft ill as good, and good as evil goes. 97. Two knights that battle for truth's painted targe, with flashing spears upon time's river marge, where, like the rushing waters, rise their steeds, and crash together in tremendous charge. 98. Their broken harness lies upon time's plain, their war's receding tide doth cast the slain, as shifts the battleground from age to age, and earth its grim memorials retain. 99. These things I marked, as in a moving show, before mine eyes life passed through gloom and glow. The trappings and the garniture that decked this house of shadows, still from room to room. 100. Man was, man is, but who shall count the gain, or measure out the sum of all life's pain? So to the play my thought made interlude, and still to fate's sad music sang refrain. End of stanzas 81 through 100. This recording is in the public domain. The Sirens Three, stanzas 101 through 120. By Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org, by Jason in Panama. 101. Man is, but who can count his being's cost? Who meets the water from the pitcher lost? The squandered corn upon the sower's path, Cast in time's scale, hath good or ill the most. 
102 each out of babel answers for himself as justice he doth love or gilded pelf who in the school of ignorance should read truth's tattered book on thriftless nature's shelf 103 unlettered children hopeless to the task and dumb before life's riddles still we ask but labor soul is answered patient thought and science still doth nature make unmask 104 ah what is life a coin but stamped and cast into time's treasury counted weighed and passed staked in the fateful race for real or woe and gold or silver changed for lead at last 105 while dread necessity great nature's nurse who rules man's way for better or for worse still watching by death's bed and births doth sit to pour life's blessing or to brand its curse 106 between the flickering lamps of day and night cloaked in her age-worn mantle care bedight behold her shape inexorable vast blind arbitress o'er changeling wrong and right 107 who pain and bliss and passion hope despair casts in life's cup she cunning mixes fair and gives as to a babe man's helpless lips drawing delicious poison unaware 108 then what is life well we might ask again a spirit from the cup that fills the brain with teeming images of love and power and high desires tis impotent to gain 109 protean life which man doth vain pursue from youth's green meads to age's mountains blue the painted fly a breathless child doth chase through all its changing shapes to change but true 110 this quivering bubble died with every stain of splendor and of passion why in vain ah why it sails the summer air an iridescent moment lost in rain 111 but still the cup is passed swift as of yore as life each new-come guest doth pledge and pour the priceless wine into the fragile glass once to the brim filled up and filled no more 112 some drink with eager thirst some waste their store or drop by drop still watch it shrinking sore some ere the vital juice hath passed their lips the frail cup shatter on the marble floor 113 yet high the feast tide rolled and those who fell few missed nor empty long their place did dwell for great the press is at earth's table round and still new streams that company doth swell 114 ah bitter was the strife and hot the breath of envy hate their smiling masks beneath and baleful fires i saw in beauty's eyes and rosy ensigns veiled the cheek of death 115 while groveled for the crumbs a famished crew as starved hounds for what man careless threw on wastrel bread and refuse fain to feed or none as deadlier their struggle grew 116 for very life at all too dear a cost as slaves these toiled while those as counters tossed their lives for gold or gold for lives exchanged indifferent so they did win who lost 117 for those the roses and for these the rue in man's unequal measures paid undue some murmured loud some patient bore their fate the poor were many and the rich were few 118 most weary of the sordid throng i grew and thence a little space apart withdrew weary of life that it this thing should be nor other lot for man that hope foreknew 119 
So to the portal dark I turned again, And there, as at the first, the sisters twain, She who the fruitless garland hung aloft, She on the shattered stone that wept in vain. 120. But in the forecourt flashed the fountain's stream, The wintry tree beside its glittering beam Bore now a cloud of blossom, red and pale, as if bright spring had touched it in a dream. End of stanzas 101 through 120. This recording is in the public domain.